I am a big fan of Led Zeppelin. Huge. I'm going to get off my soapbox and get into this video. We've moved on to Led Zeppelin 4. We're moving on to Untitled slash Led Zeppelin 4 1971, fourth album. Again, who would have guessed? But this time it's more understandable because this was the introduction of the band members' symbols, as we all know and love. And that was supposed to replace a title, but people still call it Led Zeppelin. The legendary, technically untitled album of the legendary song, Stairway to Heaven. Oh my God. Let's just get that one out of the way because we all know and love it. It is a certified classic and brilliant song. And while some dispute the legitimacy of its originality, please don't kill me, none can argue that it's a great piece nonetheless. Okay, I'm not discussing the track because it is truly, truly impossible for me to explain this and condense this down. That would be favorably and up to snuff to Led Zeppelin standards in this video so that would have to be just an entire video on itself there's tons of tons of videos out on this and very informational very informative of critiques and information and oh, okay okay we're moving on we're moving on so let's start with the opening track black dog you can just have an orgasm saying that it's an amazing blues song with killer vocals and amazing arrangements some other favorites of mine include um all of them okay I am not exaggerating when I say I literally love all of the tracks on this album. How could you not? They are incredible. It is a great achievement, a wonderful accomplishment by the band to have created this record of such great quality. I love every single track on this album without a doubt. I used to listen to this record over and over and over again in my room late at night when I was alone. Let's also talk about the art. Firstly, the band members' symbols make their debut in this record or replacement of a conventional title. This album features an antique oil painting hung on a partially dilapidated wall, and inside is a great version of the Rider Waite Major Arcana card, The Hermit. And fun fact, apparently when Hal Tomira, Black Dog can be seen in the rock formation of the inside. This is confirmed because a friend of mine and I in art school, we tried this out because he actually told me about this. I didn't know it at the time. And uh, we snuck into the bathroom and, <laughs> and did this because, you know, we were allowed to be because it's co-ed art school university thing. Okay. From the Battle of Evermore to going to California, this album is heavy, bluesy, sexy, and it's filled with some more knots to Tolkien, which we all need more knots to Tolkien in our life, in my opinion. It has to be one of my favorite Led Zeppelin albums, as probably is with a lot of people. However, it's not my absolute favorite, and I'll let you guess in the comments what my favorite is. It definitely gives spring and summer moods and has a mystical energy that emanates from it, probably because of the Tolkien references. And overall, it is just a good quality lesson. And with that, that I am going to marathon all the Lord of the Rings films. I hope you all can forgive me for how this, the shape of this record is in. This was the first Led Zeppelin album I think I got. If I, I can't even really remember, but it's either this one or Led Zeppelin 2. I'm pretty sure it's this one. My aunt gave it to me. This was her personal one. But as you can see, it's been very, very loved. This is Presence 1976, their seventh album. Lucky seven? Mm. Not so much. This is the lowest Led Zeppelin selling record. Okay, now brace yourself for this and please don't murder me. I think that this album is exactly rated where it should be. With, of course, the exception of some others. I think it's like this with Led Zeppelin records. You can tell when they were at the top of their game, inspired, when they were just so motivated. And on the flip side, you can also tell when they were running out of gas and when they weren't as involved or invested in one. And they had a lot of complications, so I'll give them that when this was coming out. Uh, Robert Plant had just gotten out of his major wreck that he had where he broke his ankle and he was recovering from that. So complete an album also in a few weeks is arguably impossible and at the very least extremely, extremely difficult and hard to do. And this was done in a matter of weeks. 
I will say I do love the artwork for this album, which was done by Hypnosis, a London art design group who works with a number of British rock bands for their album covers, including The Who, The Pretty Things, and Black Sabbath. Being a visual artist, first and foremost, I appreciate all that went into this album cover and artwork inside with the object. This is in a really interesting concept, and I feel like is one of their more creative and unconventional covers. As far as tracks go, I really do like Achilles' Last Stand, of course. Really a wonderfully composed piece and really heavy and fast. Candy Store Rock is another I really love. Probably my favorite. I just love the whimsical tune it has, kind of bringing back the like 50s vibe. Lastly, I would say T for One is one of my favorites. And it could be seen as a bit tedious, but I love the slow bluesiness of it. This album gives me summer vibes. I feel a lot of Zeppelin albums do give me a summer vibe. Sage's guitar is fiery and fast and it sounds really heavy in this record. I think that I'd probably listen to this in the morning on a sunny summer day to get me up and awake, but switch it to other albums as we go on, you know? This is just to wake me up. And But some would argue would put them to sleep. So it's a good starter, but not a good finisher, if you know what I mean. No, I'm just kidding. All right, that's enough. The last one that I have of theirs so far is The Song Remains the Same. This was also released in 1976, and it is the live soundtrack of their 1973 Madison Square Garden concert. Well, what can I say? It's Led Zeppelin live. The arrangements of the songs are all up to the live improv-driven Zeppelin standard and were probably amazing to hear in the actual venue in 1973 and at Madison Square Garden, I mean, come on. Some of my favorites include Whole Lot of Love, The 30 Minute Days and Confused. Yes, I do love it and I do love to listen to the full 30 minutes of it. Really great tracks, great picks, all the hits, all the ones the kids love to play. I also love the film of this concert as well, which features some cool artistic storylines for each of the members, which brings forth one of my favorite quotes from JPJ, my favorite member. This is tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. If I had to say what vibe this soundtrack gives me seasonally, I would definitely say Summer Again. It was shot in July 1973 as summertime, so it gives so much of this excitement this uplifting spirit in it there's the youthful vibes of it in all aspects and area it's summer and it puts you in a special mood if you know what i mean like most led zeppelin content does led zeppelin is an enigmatic group that possesses a great legacy of musical work which will be appreciated and listened to forever with their sultry bluesy rhythms and endless tolkien references led zeppelin records are some of the best to get you and your special someone in a favorable mood and will make you want to reread or watch Lord of the Rings. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so sorry I took such a hiatus on this channel, but I thank you for all your continued support and lovely comments. I will be looking out for the rest of them, but uh, out in the wild, but I might just have to give in and go through a seller or discogs, discogies and get the rest of them in my collection. I'll let you guess my favorite Led Zeppelin record in the comments and tell me yours. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.